Hey everybody, Chuck here building the CRP4848 build log number 5. Lots been done, but I'm going to break this into a few videos and uh, kind of show you how I put on the gantry, onto the gantry risers, and some quick ways to adjust it. Okay, uh, here's what I did for this. Again, these may not be approved techniques, however they work for me. Um, this little tool has been very, very, very helpful to me so far, so I recommend anybody going out and getting one. Even a Harbor Freight Special will work. This is a digital uh, caliper, um, and it also has this uh, function where on the end, you can uh, it'll poke out. Let's see if I can get it to go. And, uh, well, there we go. It'll kind of poke out of the back there, and it'll give you depth gauge readings, okay? So, I used the uh, digital caliper and um, uh, just some other uh, normal tools to kind of get the gantry on. Okay, let's talk about the gantry real quick. Um, and specifically, I'm talking about mounting the extrusion. When you mount the extrusion to the gantry risers, this is where you're going to find that... Um, the, either the gantry risers or the extrusion itself is not perfectly aligned, so you need to do a little bit of alignment. Okay, through a lot of trial and error, I got it really, really, really close, and I'll show you the quick way to do this. Okay, now remember how uh, I was talking about the measurements before, and, and when you use and set your own reference points and measure off of those, for example, the distance between this rail and that rail, making that perfect on both sides, um, sets your base. So, in order to do this, what I did was move the gantry all the way up against the bumpers. Okay? I made sure to touch the bumpers on both of them. And here's what I did. Took a little bit of clamp right here. Okay? Just a little bar clamp. Stick the bar clamp around um, the front of this bumper right here and then put it on like the brush rail there back there and this holds the uh, carriage up against the bumper not a lot of pressure just turn it until you start to see the bumper compress and back it off about a quarter turn do that to both of these little uh, gear entry risers then fit your your 3060 extrusion on there and kind of get all your bolts through there uh, just uh, t-bolt or these are actually uh, carriage bolts and the nuts on the back, and then there's two little T-bolts, one on this side, and one on this side right there. I put those in last, by the way. Okay, so um, get your bolts through the uh, extrusion and temp install all the nuts, okay? Then get your, uh, your, your T-nuts in there and kind of tighten those down. Okay, a few different things that you want to make sure. Number one, that this extrusion sits flat against... Uh, the bottom of this gantry riser, these little T-nut um, dealy dos will suck that sucker down and sit it flat against it. But at the same time, if you sit it flat against it, now you can't pull it back against it. So you kind of have to have this balance between a little bit of tightening here, a little bit of tightening here, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and eventually you'll get this thing to sit flush. Okay, so I chose a side first. First, I kind of temp installed, and I realized I was going to need to make some adjustments. So the best way to do this was with this carriage um, clamped up against here, put this extrusion on, get everything sitting flush and flat. I leveled uh, the distance between here and here on both sides and made that perfect, and then I locked this side down completely. Then when I temp installed this one, and I kind of got everything just snugged about a turn of torque, I noticed that I saw this, actually, it was actually over here, I saw this on my rail, okay? It was off about that much, okay? And what that told me was that this beam was bowing that way. So, um, also, I noticed a gap between this uh, riser and the extrusion. And when I loosened them, the bolts, and I pushed both bumpers against it. That gap was there, and I said, okay, well, that's where it wants to sit and be level, okay? So what I did was I shimmed this whole side where I saw that gap. I just put little washers in there, right, and then sucked it all down, and now I got uh, bumper touch, 
and bumper touch. Boop. All right. So um, that's how I got this side square. Now what you have to do is move it all the way back and check uh, that it engages on the other side too. This side I'm off just a little bit and I know why and I'll tell you the other thing too. Okay, so the other part of this whole equation when squaring up this gantry are these bumpers here, okay? Some of these bumpers you may have tightened the heck out of and some you may have not uh, tightened enough of. So the best way to do this is, here's what I did, using that digital caliper I measured the distance between here and here and I matched up all four, one, two, three, four on a given side. So I made sure all the bumpers were the exact same um, distance like to within five thousandths of an inch. Once I set that, I know that I can pull this gantry back there, line it all up against these bumpers, and if they line up here and they don't line up down there, then the bumpers are off down there or something else is going funky. So that's what I did. And then when I actually measured these, these were a little bit too sucked in, so I got to loosen these up like a quarter turn on this one and this one. And uh, that should fix the problem. The also to note is if you have your bumpers at different lengths, it's going to contact one side of your extrusion before the other. You want them to both contact at the same time, and that's why using that digital caliper to get that sucker locked in there was perfect. Okay, so I uh, can't stress enough about the digital caliper. Okay, then uh, that was the gantry. Um, once it was all on, all locked in, tightened up, I noticed that I had a little bit of play in one of my uh, side bearings there. Took a clamp, clamped it back on, loosened it up, tightened it together, and then that fixed that. Okay, here's the last variable that you want to talk about. And this is actually, I kind of skipped ahead, this is actually one of the first things that you should do to try and make it all touch at the same time. Okay? Realize that when you attach this gantry riser to these rails, there's a tiny gap in there where this gantry riser can sit an eighth of an inch that way or an eighth of an inch that way from this bolt hole. So if your gap is off by an eighth of an inch when you originally temp install it, what you do is clamp the sides here, here, loosen up all your bolts, small rubber face mallet and tap, 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 tap. Push that thing forward Make sure both of them are pushed forward, and that should fix any alignment issues that you got. So, again, to recap, to do this job correctly, you got a bunch of variables to consider. Number one, and the one that you should do first, and I told you about it last, was making sure that your gantry riser plate is sitting in the same spot on top of the linear carriages by loosening up these bolts and tapping the carriages to their either either the front or the back. It doesn't matter which one you do, just make sure you do the same to both of them. Then snug it down. The second thing is measuring your bumpers, the distance between the rubber face and the metal back plate there. Make those the same for each side. All right. Um, the third thing is um, clamp your, your carriage to um, some sort of uh, the bumper or the rail or something so that it holds it so when you're tightening stuff down here right it's it's tightening it down pre-tension to be up against that bumper um, and I think that's about it okay guys uh, I hope this helps you guys out this took this operation took me roughly I spent a good two hours on it because I wanted to get it just right I'm within five to six uh, uh, ten thousandths um, of an inch in accuracy on all this stuff and I just have one set of bumpers I need to I need to loosen up by about a 32nd to an eighth of an inch alright guys so uh, the next video I'm gonna talk about um, installing the rails the rail holders and the pro rack okay guys again this is Chuck building a CRP 4848 thanks for watching build log 5 see ya